And then after this amount of time, Evan, is this someone that you're going to try to do a close reduction on? Or are you going to automatically say, you know what, there must be something up. we got to go back in there. You just need more information before that. You know, wh what are you thinking right now on this workup of this patient? So this, I think this implant has a 135 neck shaft angle to the polyethylene. And if you have those, you can usually put these back in pretty easily, even in the office without sedation. But if it's a 155, you can never get them back in. So I would never try it in a 155, but I might try it in a 135. And I would just use the old methods of laying them down prone on the table, telling him to hang on to his wife's purse or stick a book in his hand and walk away for 20 minutes and then come back and maybe nudge him a little bit and they'll go back in. But I, I'm not too concerned about reducing it in general, unless they're extremely painful. I don't think it's necessary and I don't think it's gonna work. I think they do need a revision surgery, but I will get imaging. I will always get a CAT scan uh, on these patients to really see the bony anatomy around uh, the glenoid. In this place, we can see the inclinations okay with these x-rays, but a lot of times your x-rays aren't quite good enough. The question about positioning on this one, I don't understand the thick spacer. And I think for, and it's not that generous of a cut, really um, using these thicker metallic spacers, something's weird about this case and why he needed to do that. And maybe he, the guy just puts them in super tight. On the x-ray, you can see a little overhanging bone inferiorly on the glenoid. I think that's probably your culprit, but you would see it a lot better on a CT scan. And my guess is this was just mechanical levering out in sleep from that overlapping bone inferiorly.